What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast, episode 41. You are more valuable than you think. I'm Randy with my buddy, Danny. What's up, Danny? What's up, Randy? So today we are talking about you are more valuable than you think. I think there's a there's kind of an oppressive culture that we live in in the West where oftentimes our value is associated with our productivity, our job title, you know, how sexy we are, whatever it may be. <laughs> and a lot of people feel not too valuable. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard, right? Because, you know, that whole idea of a meritocracy, like we're, you know, taught that, you know, you have to keep being productive. You have to prove yourself. You have to show your worth. And, you know, people go through school, try to get good grades, they get degrees, they do all this stuff. And it's like, they're constantly focused on doing more, right? Because if you do more, you are worth more, you validate yourself in the world. And I feel like, you know, that's got to be, <clears throat> it's got to be damaging for people, I think, because I know I, I've struggled with it myself at times. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, it is interesting, though, because you look at it the other way, how if it didn't exist, you know, would we even have any urge to do anything? Like if we didn't feel like we needed to be that, because I mean, there is this insane drive that we get from having to prove ourselves. A lot of the improvement in the world is due to this, this greed or this desire or this satisfaction. If we were just totally satisfied, would we even do anything? Yeah, that's a good point that you brought that up. When I was, when I was thinking about it, you know, I had a, I had heard a, uh, it was on the radio, but they were talking about productivity, right? And they were like, talking about how like, you know, how damaging it is, how dangerous. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, you know, if that's all you're focused on. But at the same time, you're right, you know, I mean, could we even live without it? I think it seems kind of like human beings, at least for me, and I think a lot of people, right, like, we prove ourselves by doing things in the world, we prove what we're capable of, we prove our skill levels by actually doing stuff, right? I think it was Mark's Mark said in his like young writings, right, that, you know, like effectively, like, you know, whatever powers we have, they're only realized in the world, right? So we only know what we can do once we do it. I don't know if I can build a table until I build a table, right? Mm -hmm. And before yeah, that, I have no only, idea. It's just theoretical. Yeah, you yeah. only discover your gifts when they're challenged. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, it's, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And it, I mean, it's something that I struggle with on a daily basis because, like, on one hand, I accomplish amazing things, but on the other hand, I think I'm not good enough. And so I have to accomplish more. <laughs> and however, I also have incorporated a regular practice of reminding myself regularly that I'm better than I think I am, because I think that's the catch. See, it's, it's not how valuable we actually are. It's how valuable we think we are. And I think there's a huge difference because most people don't really notice how valuable they are. They just notice how valuable they feel. And especially now with like COVID and people out of work and all this type of stuff, people feel less valuable. But the thing is, their value is immeasurable. But there are certain things you can kind of look at to, to determine your value. But, you know, it's kind of... Um, finding the the difference between what you feel and what is actually true well, you know it's funny you mentioned that too right because like obviously all values are tied to like whatever we think right i mean whatever however i decide to value things it'll be valued that way and they can be valuable to me to that extent so on the one hand yeah right it's just a matter of how we look at ourselves and how we view ourselves that's where our value stems from but i think it's it's also easy to sort of focus on the outside external and imagine that there is like this because i think a lot of people when we get caught up in this productivity idea of value right you you're measuring yourself in that way you act as if there's an objective standard for value you act as if value exists outside of you and you need to prove your worth or validate yourself that way and i think that is the problem right because it's like it's like looking on social media and seeing like you know people with a huge house or really sexy or whatever and you're like oh you know and it's like that seems in a way almost objective. <clears throat> like <clears throat> you think like almost anybody that would look at this, see that. And so I think that's part of the problem maybe is that it, it tricks us into 
into forgetting or distracting ourselves from the fact that we create the value. It's not really existing in the world. Yeah, and it's, it's like a trick of our mind because our mind is very good at picking up on what's not there. Whereas it's something that we actively have to do to figure out what is there. So like my mind on autopilot, it's like a spell checker or something like that. It automatically picks out the things that aren't there, aren't there, aren't there. But it's something that I actively have to do. I have to be like, oh, that's that guitar I wanted. Oh, that's that computer I wanted. Oh, there's that Nintendo Switch I wanted. And I have all of that. It's like this stuff is surrounding me all the time, but it takes active practice to recognize that stuff. And it's the same thing with seeing value and that we are valuable. It's like, granted, I could pick my mind on autopilot. will pick out the things that I'm lacking and things that I'm not great in, but it takes practice to say, Hey, I did this and I'm good at that. And I'm doing better than I've done before at this. And you know what, compared with 97% of the world, I'm pretty excellent in this. So it's like actively looking at those things to help determine our value. No, I think that's a good point, right? It's like you have to train yourself almost to do it because otherwise, you know, you do, you miss it. It's almost like your brain just kind of looks at all the things lacking, all the disappointments and focuses on, you know, what needs to be changed rather than what's good now. And I think that's, so if we're, if we're talking about, you know, we're, if we we're more valuable, you know, or you're more valuable than you think, you know, the issue then is obviously with how we're thinking should be part of it, I would imagine, right? And, you know, I think part of that too is living in the sort of type of culture and world that we do that sort of puts a lot of emphasis on external things like, you know, object possession, things like that as a sign of value. So what do you think that people can do to kind of start learning to put that into practice to think the right way or to see their value for what they're really worth. Yeah. I think you really have to uh, work on gratitude and just like observing the things that you have. And it's, you know, there was this, uh, there was this Ted talk, I think called hardwired happiness. Maybe it wasn't a Ted talk. Maybe it was just, there's so many Ted talks anymore. This (laughs) this was like, this was an old one from like long time ago called hardwired happiness by Sri Rao Kumar, something like that. And Basically, he was talking about how, like, you know, everything that you have now, at one point, you wanted it, you were lacking it. And it's like, the thing is, we totally, we totally lose perspective of all the things that we have. And so it's, it's really that stuff in life, seeing that value, like, look at, there's, there's a story in um, Norman Vincent Peale's Power of Positive Thinking, where some dude lost his job. He thought his life was over. And he's like, okay, well, do you have your integrity? And the guy's like, yeah, I I feel like I have my integrity. Okay, we'll put that one down. How about your wife? Oh, yeah, she'd never leave me. She's great. Okay, great. How about family? Yeah, my children, they support me. They say we'll be with you no matter what. Okay, so you got children too. How about good standing in community? And like, you go through these things and you see that it's, it's not the being a a complete success. It's not the, the notoriety or the money. It's, you know, I'm valuable to this person. Like I know um, back when my grandmother was alive, I derived such great value from being able to go over to her house once a week and spend time with her because I know I made that a difference in her life. And also it made a difference in my life because I was able to help improve her life. And that was something that like, I know I'm valuable because I'm making a difference in someone else's life. And it's, I, I think a lot of it is, taking a look around you and seeing what people's lives you can make a difference in even so much as a smile. Yeah. I like that. You know, the emphasis on relationships and like, so seeing your worth in a sense through your connection to others. And you also the idea too, I mean, you seem to be suggesting like the idea, like, you know, we need like a balance. I think a lot of times when we struggle with this, we're really like, when we struggle with questions about our own value, we're really focused on like, one thing like and it's oftentimes like success or money or something like that that we're really focused on as a sign of our self-worth but we're forgetting all those other things in life that one make our life quality and you know good but also that makes it you know valuable and i think it's easy to for i think it can even become a distraction and when you focus on one thing you like things fall apart and i mean i like that example too because you know a lot of times i think when we really struggle with this question we're probably struggling with other things 
you know, it's usually like, you know, depression and stuff like that, that causes us to really, to really think that way. And you have to start, you know, asking yourself, well, what is valuable? In my life? What do I have now? You know, do I have my, I have my, you know, even if it's something simple, like, you know, I'm still breathing, right? I'm still here. And so there still is time to do things. There's still time to change. So this is the challenge. It's like finding that balance and finding out then, you know, how do we start determining and, and really seeing these values for what they are? Because I think, like you said, you know, gratitude's a good one, you know, trying to pay attention to, you know, what we do have and being grateful for it, being thankful for it. I think, you know, setting time seems to help as well to appreciate those things that are in our life. So making sure that we're not just, you know, working 20 hours a day and we're doing stuff with people that matter. I think that's helpful. Yeah, it's a tough one. I also think, uh, you know, taking a different look at it because trying to trying to determine your value from like a financial metric is a terrible metric. It's one of the it's one of the most easily measured ones, but it's a terrible metric because it it doesn't do anything. Like I remember there was this guy I watched on YouTube for years and I finally just one day out of and, and he was a multimillionaire. And just like one day by random chance, I was walking around Dallas and I ran into him. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's it like to be a millionaire? What's it feel like to be a millionaire? And he's like, it feels the same as it did before. And that like <laughs> blew my mind. Because we have all these, we have all these fantasies that like, oh, as soon as you're a millionaire, then it's just like, oh, all of the life's problems go away. But it's not true. It's just like that's the fantasy. And so you have to find something else to derive your value from. And I think one really helpful thing, because it's something that everyone can do from where they are right now. And, and the easiest way to do that is just to ask, how is the world better because I'm here? Hmm. You know, and it may be something as simple as I water the plant on my kitchen table. And if I didn't do that, it would die or I feed this dog. And if I didn't do that, the dog would die. Or maybe it could be a lot more profound. Like maybe you are that one person who helps someone out and nobody else is willing to help them. Or maybe you contribute, maybe you have a big business and you help support thousands of families or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it's, it's very crucial to recognize the difference that you're making in the world. Yeah, shift that focus away from, you know, it's funny, though, because, you know, I think we often look at things that are easy to measure, right? Like you said, like money and stuff is just one, we all I mean, I think we're trained to think in terms of it, right? Cost benefit kind of analysis, we tend to think that way. Um, It's also easily measurable. But it kind of I think that's the problem, too, is like, you know, I think individual value is not easily measured. And that's just it, because it's, it's something that is very complex and has to take into account a lot of different factors. And we tend to miss that quite often when we're doing it ourselves. You know, we're looking at really arbitrary things that really don't matter, like, like, you know, getting a certain degree or earning a certain amount. It's like, that doesn't mean your life is good. And I think that's the misconception. You know, when we talk about value and your, you know, the individual's value, it's, you have the power to create your life, to be whatever you want. You have the power to make a difference to be part of the world and to be really you know connected to a lot of people and valued in that way and i think it's it's difficult to see that though a lot of times and that's really where people struggle you know we struggle with all these types of things because we're so used to dealing with you know um the quick assessment if you know you know what i mean like really making fast determinations about value making quick judgments and i think slowing down can be a big help in that way too to really think clearly and see, you know, why am I making this judgment? What am I basing it on? And is it really like a limited perspective? Am I being very narrow in my thinking or am I trying to account for like everything? That's where it gets difficult. I think, you know, it it comes down to to having, you know, an idea of, you know, what, what, why, what matters to you in life? What makes your life quality or of high value? And that's a difficult question too, I think for a lot of people. Yeah. I, I like what you said there with kind of slowing down and stopping. Cause I think that is really important. Um, there's that saying, all a man's problems come from his inability to sit still and do nothing. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we wind ourselves up because we think we have to do so much and be so much. And, you know, like when, when you and I started this podcast, we just 
I, I mean, honestly, we just want to spend more time together. Um, yeah, really. <laughs> and, yeah, and we enjoy spending time together. But but we looked at it and we're like, hey, if we can help out one person, literally, just one person, that would make it so worthwhile. And even if we can't do that, just because we get to spend time together and talk yeah. and it helps out with our own difficulties, that's so worthwhile. So it's kind of like you have to just kind of slow down and maybe stop trying to do so much. Like I would, I would, I would even say, yeah, if you're, if you feel like you're not very valuable right now, I would say do maybe even do less. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point too, right? Because when we, you know, especially when we kind of get caught in that, in that cycle, you know, we're pushing ourselves, we start to get really, we start to, I think a lot of times we start to feel negative and then distract ourselves through being more active rather than the opposite approach, which would be to slow down, do less and actually kind of take an assessment. But see, this is the hard thing, right? Because most of us too also think like, if we stop, we die, right? If we stop, everything ends. I won't be able to afford anything. It'll fall apart. I won't get the promotion. And it's like, but if you stop and you give yourself a chance to think, you can also kind of start making real decisions. Like maybe you're not happy in what you're doing. Maybe that's not the right course of, you know, uh, maybe that's not the right career choice for you or whatever. And, you know, it's funny, I think, it, but we make it seem so hard to do that. And it's like, you know, I mean, even with like the whole lockdown thing, right? Like so many people I talked to were just like watching TV all the time and stuff. And it's like, well, you have all this time to at least set some aside for doing stuff that's going to help, right? And benefit you and make things better or improve. But that's a difficult thing. You know, it's like taking that time, even slowing down enough to even look at ourselves. A lot of us are afraid to do that. I think a lot of people are afraid to really look inside. Well, because then you have to confront everything, but, (laughs) um, but you know, like with, with that idea of slowing down. So like, here's the thing we think we have to, we, we don't feel valuable we think we have to prove our value. And so like we're putting all this stuff out there in a lacking or a wanting sense. Whereas instead of if we stop and we start recognizing our value and no matter where you are, I guarantee you have value. And I think I was just yeah. thinking of what would be such a good exercise because I read this book goals by Brian Tracy and, or maybe it was an audio program. Um, he, and he was saying, yeah. write down a hundred goals. And oh yeah, I remember before that. Yeah. You know it, yeah, before you know it, you'll start accomplishing that. So I would challenge anyone, and I think I'm going to do that this weekend, is write down a hundred things that prove that you are valuable or a hundred reasons oh. you're valuable. That's a good idea, you know? yeah. Because we we never take the time to do that. You know, we're, our mind will constantly think of all these things that I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. And I'm not where I thought it would be, but we don't take enough time to actually put in the positive thoughts. Yeah. And I mean, so when do people, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, when like, do people ever stop? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that garbage in, garbage in, garbage out theory that yeah. I have. Like, I think our brains are just like computers. We put garbage in, we're going to get garbage out. So if we put more positive stuff in, we're going to get a lot more positive stuff out. No, I think it's a great point. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking too, you know, it's like, I always wondered, you know, like we we're so good at seeing what we're lacking, right? We, we, what we're missing, what we need. And I always wondered if that's like, a, you know, like maybe like an evolutionary type thing from like back in the day, you know, like, oh God, like, you know, we would die if we don't have enough food for, you know, we know the rain's coming or whatever, right? You know, the season's changing. You need to have stuff supplied and stocked up. And so there's this like, you're looking around and you're seeing, oh God, I don't have enough of that. I got to go get that because we won't make it through, you know, this time period or whatever. But now that's not the problem. So instead we're looking around and we're like, oh, I, I don't have a Lexus. Or I don't have a Porsche or whatever. And blah, and I don't have this. And it's like, well, yeah, okay, maybe you don't. But those things are not the same type of, it's not your basic survival that's an issue or at stake, right? But that mechanism, and I think that's one of the interesting things about humans is we've changed our world so much, but all those mechanisms for survival and for living are still present. And I think a lot of times they do mess us up. Okay, so I'm, re- I'm rereading this book called Factfulness because it's such a good book on getting a positive perspective that the world is getting better. Like undoubtedly, 
the world is getting better. It's proven factually the world is getting better. But like case in point, we have the same exact body makeup for the past 10,000 years, maybe even more than that. However, in the past 100 years, that's two orders of magnitude less than that, our life expectancy has doubled in the past 100 yeah. years. We yeah. went from like 30 years to 70 plus years across the world. And, and however, we have the same exact body, the same exact makeup that we've had <laughs> for 10,000 years. So it's, you know, it's, I think it is evolutionary. We were, uh, we were bred to figure out what's missing because that's, that kept us alive. But nowadays life is, you know, for many people, life is kind of just a given. So now we have to harness the powers that we have to actually remind ourselves we're valuable. Well, yeah, and you know, it's funny too, like, um, you know, if you look back in history, right, I, the other thing I think is really interesting about this is like, when you look back at like, you know, ancient philosophers and thinkers, you know, there were always people that usually, usually not always, but a lot of times they had either means oftentimes, or, you know, but basically they, they had some way to support themselves or they were willing to be impoverished, right? Because they, you need time to think. It's like sort of like, you know, that ability to sort of work through those types of problems, it, re- it requires free time. It requires time not to spend on survival. I think what's interesting is, you know, for most of our history, you know, we were so caught up in survival and all the stuff needed for that, that you're kind of distracted from other things, from thinking and reflecting and worrying about stuff. Now it's like everybody's got time to do that. So it's like, oh God, now I have to deal with this. And it's like you you run around trying to sort of, you know, distract yourself from really looking at it. But I think there is, it's a lot better when you just take a step back and look at it and deal with it. Because then, you know, one, you can start figuring out what you really want, what's good for you. You can see your value in the world. You can start making those right connections. And I think, you know, for a lot of us too, we think we want things because we see other people have them and stuff, but in reality, they're not even things we actually want. It's like a disconnect between like what we really want in our lives and things that we need and that we would really value and what we see other people have and we think we should have to validate ourselves. And those are two different things. You know, it's like, and I think it's interesting because we all struggle with this sort of difficulty of making sense of, you know, who we are in the world and understanding ourselves in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, and most of the times getting those things, we want them because we think it would change our state. Like we think <laughs> yeah. if we get that, we would be satisfied. That's a that's an experiment that I try and do every every. So like, you know, I talked previously in the episodes about how I kind of bookend my days, how like during yeah. the day, I don't really know what's going to happen. But in the morning and at night, I can I can predict and I can make myself do stuff. So like in the morning, one of the things that I do is journaling. And, um, part of, part of that journaling is reminding my, like, I have it written there. You're more valuable than you think you are or something along those lines. Um, but also, Hmm. There was something else. What were we just talking about? I don't know. You're talking about your book (laughs) journaling. I like, no, I mean, I like that idea though. And, you know, I think, um, well, with that, I think journaling is like, they've shown that time and time again, how powerful it is actually for, you know, actually work both working through problems and also just actually being able to like it helps us slow down and actually look at it because you're writing it down so you're thinking about it you're putting it on paper you're doing something permanent essentially with it or putting it out in the world right i think it's a great idea you know is one you know like you can remind yourself actually through journaling right you know that you're more valuable than you think but you can also start working through some of the things that really do define your value like you know what am I doing today that's that's important, that's valuable? Who am I seeing? What relationships really matter? You know, you can work through these sorts of questions on paper, and it has a lot more power doing it that way, I think, than just sort of, because if you just think about it, you can get distracted easily. Other things come up. It's a lot different writing it down. I know that because I've, I've journaled, I mean, ever since I was really young, I've always done it, and I find it hugely valuable. It's also a good way to work through problems in general, because you can kind of just, you know, slowly do it. Yeah, so... So that's another, that's one of the things that I, that I just came back to me was um, I'm working on being contented now. So like, I know we talk a whole bunch about goals and like, I'm, I'm very goal oriented and I think it's very important to write down goals. And I do that every day, but, and, and I do it with a, a time when I expect to achieve that goal. But also one thing that I write down every day is I am 
peaceful, contented, and fulfilled today. And so like, that's one thing that every morning I work to achieve um, because it takes me out of this, this mindless scramble to get more, to be more, to do something else and reminds me that wherever I am, whatever I have, I can be peaceful, contented, and fulfilled. Well, I think that's the thing that most of us struggle with, right? Is that <clears throat> normally it's like you get caught up in this, you get caught up in the day to day, you get caught up in trying to make more, to have more, to better your circumstances. And it's easy to sort of lose yourself, get distracted in that and focus on that as if that's all that matters. We talked about this before, right? Where, you know, looking at ends as if, you know, we get a goal or we get some achievement, like we're going to be happy then, right? Like that's going to change everything. Just having it like, oh, I'm a vet now, like you always said, right? Or, or oh, I finally got that degree or whatever. It doesn't actually change anything though, because they, you're still the same person, right? And I think part of it too is recognizing, you know, recognizing that, you know, you don't actually need more that you have what you need now, that things are good now, starting to really pay attention to that really does make everything else more valuable because then it's, you're adding on to it. You're not constantly in the negative. You know, you're constantly, it's, you're building rather than sort of trying to chase, I guess. It's like yeah. that saying, wherever you go, there you are. We always think <laughs> yeah. that the grass is greener when we get somewhere else, then it'll be different, but you'll just be somewhere else with the same person. And yeah. The same shitty person now. Isn't it, funny, isn't it funny that that's like, we do trick ourselves though into thinking that way all the time, even with, you know, whether it's even with self-worth, like, oh, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll validate myself when I get that promotion or this or that. And it's like, why would that fundamentally change anything? Like it might improve your circumstances a little, but, and you know, it might not also, if it means more hours or whatever, or more stress, maybe it's not making you better. Maybe it's making you worse. And I think it's, it's this confusion of, you know, the metric for self-value, right? Is really the, the difficulty. I've always, I've always liked flip-flopping the if-then fallacy. So like the, the whole idea, like, or, uh, you know, when I get this, then I'll be happy. Or when I do this, then I'll be happy. I always like flip-flopping that to when I'm happy, then I'll do this. When I'm, so like, for instance, uh, you know, I thought for a long time that like, when I uh, was a veterinarian, I would be happy. And, and so like I went and I did all this work, I became a veterinarian and then I realized I didn't like that profession. So <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. Oops. So nowadays, yeah, oops. So like nowadays I'm like, ooh, when, when I'm a really good computer programmer, then I'll be happy. I switched that around. I'm like, okay, when I'm happy, then I'll be a really good computer programmer. So let me focus on being happy and let me every day take the actions to be a really good computer programmer. And so like that way I can have the goal that I wanted anyways, being happy, but I can have it the whole time instead of just at the end. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I think it's, it's all too just about our perspective and how we're thinking about things. It's really the funny, I think that's why it's so difficult too so often is that it's so easy to just, to, to, it's so easy to take the wrong perspective to get caught up in looking at it the wrong way that you just sort of forget how to do it the right way or don't ever know. And I think that's why, you know, like stepping back or looking at things differently, like you said, trying to flip the perspective, trying to flip your thinking so that you do see it from a new light and you start to kind of maybe incorporate that into your evaluation. And it starts to make it a lot easier to see our worth and our value. Because the truth is, I mean, every, I think everyone, you know, just insofar as human beings are just potential, right? I mean, it's all possibility. So there alone, we have value just in that sense. And you also have time. You know, you're, if you're alive, you're breathing, you have time. That's something awesome. You're also, you know, not dead, which is good. <laughs> and you're here. So I mean, there's always something you can do with it. And I think that's what we forget is like that potential that we are, the sort of possibility that we are is valuable in itself because that's how everything is done in our world right it's done by individuals doing stuff so yeah yeah, yeah it's you you made some really good points just right there so like just being alive 99.9 percent 9 of the people who have ever lived are dead you're valuable you you were somehow that lucky sperm and egg that became <laughs> a person you're valuable you know yeah. it's like all of these things that that are just like it, okay for instance uh, in this book, uh, Factfulness, basically like 100 plus years ago, 
most of the population was at what we would consider the poverty poverty level, like barely mm-hmm. barely having enough food to survive. Many times going to sleep hungry, like just that. I would guess that most people listening to this podcast can probably maybe even order food to their house. Like, yeah, yeah. Think about how awesome that is. And, you know, what a great thing it is to be able to live in these times. So, so it really comes down to noticing these things and actually it, it really is noticing them and experiencing that. So like, um, I, they, they always talk, um, I did a whole bunch of like these Tantra things for a while. And they always talk about, you know, like everybody wants to improve their sex life. So they get all these toys and they get all these <laughs> yeah. like crazy new positions, but it's really not that at all. It's really just becoming more sensitive to, yeah. to actually what's happening in the present. So it comes down to focusing and observing what's happening in the present and being more sensitive to that stuff. And so Noticing your value is really becoming more sensitive to your value. And you do that by actually recognizing where you're valuable. I like that too, you know, because I think that's so true for most everything we struggle with, right? It's, it's really like about not being distracted, being more sensitive, being actually focused on something too, because it's so easy not to focus on stuff. And I think, you know, like what you said there too, like when we're, when we're looking at things like uh, like you know acquisition of objects you know um goals things like that if we're putting our value in those things we're making a fundamental error about value we're assuming that something gives us value rather than us giving it value you know i mean it was a uh, <clears throat> was it protagoras that said you know man is the measure of all things the things that are that they are things that are not that they're not right like you know we pretty much are the determiners of all things things the world is a construct of our making it's the human world we live in right so value is something we create it's not something that is granted to us by an object or by uh you know a goal that we achieve or anything like that it's our thinking that makes that so and i think once you see that you can start correcting but it's very it is it's easy to get lost in that because it's easier sometimes to <clears throat> rely on what we perceive to be real objective things right that can sort of bestow value or make value whereas you know we're missing the real truth of it that we created so anything can be i mean you know, it's why people value different lifestyles right you know not everybody wants to be i mean i think we mentioned this i think last time but i said like you know i wouldn't want to ever be elon musk or something i think that to me that would be a terrible life <laughs> none of that would be i mean the money's whatever but even that to a certain point you know it's just not the life that i would want and i think when you look at it that way, you start to see that, you know, well, it's really our, our perception that puts the value in things or makes it. And, you know, we can then assert our own value because we're the creators of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you made so many good points. The one, one thing that you said is recognizing the fallacy in our thinking. And that, that is really helpful. Um, Cause it's like, Oftentimes it may just be like one or two thoughts that we have that I'm not valuable because I don't feel it because this one thing, you know, this, this one, like I I'm, I'm out of work right now because of COVID. I don't feel valuable. And this is like one of the worst things. I, I don't remember what book, but I read about it. Like back in the depression, like people didn't, couldn't like, they literally couldn't find jobs there and they oh, felt yeah, yeah. totally worthless. And it's like one of the worst things feelings that you can feel oh yeah it is you know and a lot of people are there right now because of because of covid and it's terrible and my heart goes out to them um but it's like recognizing the fallacy in that thinking okay so like equating having a job at at this present moment right now this one day out of the thousands of days of your life not having a job this one day out of the thousands of days of your life makes you not valuable like recognizing the fallacy of that thinking whereas you could change your focus like some some dude i knew used to say hocus pocus change your focus and uh, and so you could change your focus and say i know that right now i feel not very valuable because i don't have a job but i also know 
that this person, I make a big difference in their life. And that makes me valuable. So it's like changing your focus to get the result that you're looking for. I think that is the crucial skill to help people feel more valuable. No, I think it really is. And it's a good point. And, you know, when we, when we think that way too, you know, when we're looking at, you know, our self-worth is tied to like, you know, whether I have a job right now or whether I get this thing or that thing, you know, we're also forgetting that, you know, we're focusing on what we lack, but we're not focusing also on what we have. Like you said, like either that I make a difference in this person's life or that, you know, I also have the capacity to start doing different things. So I could focus my energies on other things that might lead to something then else like a job or something like that later in some different area you never know but i think always focusing on that lacking thing as the defining factor it also is a way to it also kind of gives us then that negative outlook that then can derail us and right make us more miserable moving forward and it's that's always the difficult thing there right is keeping that perspective right or trained on the right things even when we're struggling, even when we're facing difficulties. That's yeah. hard. To so, here, yeah. so here's another example. Um, I, I love this saying, like, it doesn't matter where you were or where you are as much as where you're, you want to be. Mm. So like the past and the present don't matter nearly as much as where you want to be in the future. And so like point in case, uh, I told you that I'm working on studying a language as an adult. And like, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it, I've been doing it for a month and it's pretty intensive, you know, it's three hours a day, five days a week. So it's, it's pretty intensive, but like every day I struggle with this. Oh, I don't want to make a mistake because <laughs> then people will think this of me and then I won't be as, as valuable, you know? And it's like, but I know deep down that like, I need to put myself out there. I need to make those mistakes so I can learn from it. And so it's, it's that, it's that thinking that like, you know, even though right now things may not be great, even though I may make a mistake now, even though I may be out of work right now, even though whatever is going on right now, the place where you want to be, if that is better, if that is worthwhile, then whatever you're doing right now is worthwhile. I like, yeah, I like that thinking too. And you know, it's funny, like, you know, you mentioned like, we do that so often, like with the class you're taking, right? You're paying for a class and you're afraid to make a mistake. That makes no sense when you think about it, right? It's like hilarious because it's like, when you're paying for this, it's a service to learn a language. And why would you not make a mistake? You don't know it. You're learning it, right? It's like this, this whole thing we get caught up in and like having like, imagining that like, you know, the camera's always on us or whatever, right? So we're always worried about how we look, about what we're doing. And it's like, that's what, kills us because we don't then do anything we don't try we're afraid we don't really actually focus and put our whole selves in which would make it that much better and we would actually do really well if we weren't afraid of those things and i think this is the difficulty though because when we're caught up in that you know when we do get caught up in like the establishing our value in the world based on externals right we worry about things like that because you know if i make a mistake then oh you know um, um an idiot or whatever, or not, you know, I'm not presenting myself as being intelligent or whatever, like I shouldn't do this immediately, right? And it's, I think that's, that's a good way to look at it because it does help. And the idea of focusing on, you know, what you want and that makes it all worthwhile because that's really what, what matters. In the end. And, and also what you said there, the error in focusing on the externals. So we've yeah. talked about this before and it's the idea of what's within your control and what's not within your control. And so like- <laughs> doing i i'm such a big fan of rewarding yourself for taking the action because the action is within your control that's the only thing within your control is the action the results the, they may come they may not come but you have no absolutely no control over that so like taking the action taking the action taking the action doing it doing it doing it persistence over and over again just take the action reward yourself for taking the action just take the action and that's it and eventually the reward will come or maybe it won't but whatever is going to happen will happen anyways you know what i love about that too though and that's a great point which is like you know take like you know you could put you could work your ass off you could answer phone calls at midnight for a job you know you might want a promotion you could still miss a promotion because you know the boss's brother or whatever 
wants a job or whatever, right? I mean, you could get passed over for something that has nothing to do with your work, nothing to do with how much time and effort you put in. And it's like those things, because they're not in your control, focusing on them as a determination of worth is a total fallacy. Because then if it doesn't work out, you think you failed, but you didn't fail. It just didn't work out, right? The circumstances were out of your control and something happened. But we act as if, you know, that if that determines our worth, we're acting as if somehow that's our in our control when it's not. And that's the mistake people are making. And that's the problem. What is in your control is the things you do, right? You know, the choices you make and how you want to live your life. And I think that sort of thinking, though, is probably where we all struggle because it's like we're acting as if, you know, we're defined or our values defined by stuff that really, you know, we have no control over. Where our values should be defined by our agency, by our doing, by our acting in the world. And really, you know, this is the thing I think that, you know, probably most people do struggle with because it's, you know, you see it all the time with, you know, in the workplace and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I like I love I love the stories of the people who never give up. Like yeah. <laughs> what, what I was just reminded of was the movie Founder, the story of Ray Kroc from McDonald's. How like when he was, I forget exactly, but he was like on the site of the McDonald's, and he was like, "Come on, just this once!" Like he's tried again and again and again and again and again. And he's like, "Come on, just <clears throat> this once work," and like. You know, you hear the story of Colonel Sanders. He was in his 60s or 70s when he finally got something that worked. And you hear the story of the woman who wrote the Harry Potter book. She was turned down time and time and time and time again. But she just kept on going. Like, I love the stories of the people who it doesn't matter. No matter what, I'm just going to keep on doing it. I don't care if I never get there, but I'm going to do everything in my power to get there. And I love that stuff. Well, I like that too, though, because it's also like, you know, those are the types of situations where you know that, like, it's easy to tell that if the person didn't keep doing it, didn't keep going, they would absolutely regret that later. And that would be worse than failing. You know, that's worse than anything else. And I think that's an important thing to think about, too, is like, you know, what would I regret not doing? What would I regret having? Not, what, I mean, and it can be anything, you know, like, you know, not having a better relationship with someone or not spending more time, you know, whatever, it doesn't have to just be like goal oriented, but, you know, thinking that way too can be very sort of um, eye opening in terms of our actual values and what matters to us. Because when you think of it that way, I think it's important, you know, if I didn't do this, would I, would I regret it later? Even if I failed, even if it didn't work, would I still be happy that I at least tried? And I think, you know, that is, it's important because, you know, if we just keep trying and persist, like you said, you know, something will usually does work out. That is true. Or we find ways to adjust it or adapt it because sometimes those failures also give us insight into, you know, this is a good idea, but it's not working because of X, Y, and Z or whatever. <clears throat> and I think that's, you know, it's a good point. Yeah. It's tough though. And what, what you say like. about regrets, like we all have to remember we're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, granted, whatever you think, Maybe, maybe there's rebirth or whatever, but for the most part, if there's not, we may only have this one turn at it, this one shot. So like, we're all going to die. And as we're like, you have to imagine as you're laying there, either in the hospital, in your home, wherever it is, and you know, your time is up. You've all your time on earth is up. You know, did you do what was valuable? Did you live a valuable life? And if you're not doing that, you got to start putting in the time. Like yeah. today. And it's, this, is, this is the big thing. It's not something where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow or next week or anything. It needs to be today. And it needs to be something small. Five minutes. But do that five minutes every day. Yeah, you have to put it in. I think, you know, and you have, it's recognizing that you have value, that you have this ability to create whatever you want. But again, it's, you have to do it. And then imagining, you know, really, really thinking through like, what would I, and I think that's also a good exercise, like to write down or something. What would I regret not doing in my life? List two things, five things, 10, and keep increasing it, right? Like, what would I, if I was on my deathbed now, what would I regret not doing? What would I really be upset about? Would it be not getting a certain car or TV? I doubt it. Those kind of things, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, they're nice to have, but they don't really matter in terms of like regrets. I can't imagine anybody regretting that. 
I mean, maybe, maybe like, I don't know, in some cases, but <clears throat> so it's like thinking that way, I think can give us a really clear direction too on what, what values matter and what, what really matters to us. And then doing the things that matter really do, does increase our sense of value, I think, because we're also seeing our value realized by doing something that we care about and that we love, not just trying to be validated by things outside of us. Yeah, that's a, that's another really good exercise. I'm going to do that too. If I, yeah, because, because that's another, that's another fallacy is thinking that, you know, our deathbed is so far off. Like yeah. we have to stop <clears throat> acting like we've got a thousand years to live. I think that was Marcus Aurelius who said that because we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You know, we don't have all the time in the world, but we, it's often easy to feel like we have a lot of time, right? And trick ourselves. And at the same time, you know, you don't want to be so panicked about it. (laughs) Like, I guess can go both ways, but yeah, reminding ourselves of that, like, look, this all ends. So, you know, just collecting stuff doesn't do you anything. You can't take it with you. I don't know. This isn't like, you know, I mean, even the pharaohs, they dump stuff with them, but that didn't matter, you know, in the end of the day. So yeah, if you can't take it with you, you got to enjoy it now. You got to use it now. And I think the best way to look at that is, you know, what should I do that's going to make sure that I don't regret anything later? And that's a valuable life because it's your life. Yeah. So um, I guess in, in summary. Um, in summation. In summation, you're more valuable than you think. You have to remind yourself of that. And if, and if you don't feel that right now, you have to. You have to look at, look at your life. And I would say definitely the relationships, be it relationships with people, with animals, with plants. Like those are the things, at least for me, that make it really, really clear that I have value. I think that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. Seeing our real impact in the world with other living entities is important because it's like a verified relationship right where there is we're important to something else right? it's survival and that you know makes sense in a very clear way <clears throat> yeah mm-hmm. i would also say too i think you know as you know as self-aware creatures i think we need to remind ourselves too all the time that look we are potential we are the value creators and that means that we are in ourselves valuable because we are the standard of value we're the ones that determine value so don't get caught in the mistake of flipping that and allowing things to assign value to you when you're the one that should be assigning value. I think that's crucial to remind yourself that, you know, that we are basically limitless value because we're limitless potential. And then finding out what's the hard part is then finding out what things are right for you. But your value, like you said, is affirmed through your relationships and through your being in the world. I think that's the important part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think the first most important thing is just recognizing the fallacy of the thought I'm not valuable. Like recognizing yeah. that that's that that thought is wrong. It may feel that way, it may seem that way, but it's wrong. And then investigating that and actually seeing where you do have value. And you know, if you need to reach out to a counselor, reach out to if things are bad, suicide prevention hotline. You know, but like recognizing that you have value inherently it's it's a truth you have value yeah mm-hmm. you know and part of that too that's nice about that is you know that recognizing and trying to explore it you know you really it is hard sometimes but you know things always your life gets better and you know afterwards by doing that by going through the work and putting the work in it gets better and that's always true, but it's always the hardest part is starting the process, right? Of making it better and of asserting your value. And I think that's important as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I know this weekend, I'm definitely going to be journaling a bit. I'm going to be uh, writing down a hundred reasons that I am valuable. And also I'm going to be investigating if I was on my deathbed today, what would I regret? Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to try and come up with, I think, 10 things that I would regret. And that's what I'm going to try and focus on is if I can come up with 10, both, you know, like, and try and really think that through. So I think that would be a difficult one. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Cool. 
So anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we're good, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Episode 41. We're 11 away from Damn. 52 of the Existential Stoic <laughs> Podcast. Uh, guys, listen to us on all the podcast platforms. Also, you can watch our videos on YouTube at the Existential Stoic Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Randy. That's my buddy, Danny. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next week. Later, Randy.